Hello and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we are going to talk about one of the newest measures that City Council um, has imposed based on input from neighborhood leaders about where you can park your car on your front yard. My guests are from Community Development, Kim Michael and Allison Jakura. Welcome. Thank you. So first of all, I want to talk about, I mean, I did a little bit in the intro, but, but why this is an issue. Um, what What is it about parking your car up by your front door that um, is, is bothering people who live maybe next door to you or across the street? So I think we've had a lot of concern over the years from our community members about parking on lawns because essentially I think people think that it brings property values down. Um, it really just doesn't look good for a neighborhood. It doesn't um, help keep pride in the neighborhood and things like that. Also, there can be a little bit of an environmental factor of if you're parked in kind of all over your grass, you're really compacting that dirt. And so stormwater runoff is going to be less, it's not going to go into the dirt as much, it'll run off. And so you're kind of increasing runoff in your neighborhood. So. Well, and yeah, and I think of people, you know, there's some people in my neighborhood who are very proud of their front front lawns mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, mow it in that diagonal kind of pattern mm -hmm. and... But that does look good, and I understand that. And so if you're parking on it, you're also ruining your grass. Yep. The roots don't absorb, you know, water as much anymore. I mean, you really are creating it, – it's not just that it doesn't look good. It does – I can see that it, it would really hurt the neighborhood. So there are some exceptions to this. Um, basically, if there is no legal street parking, you are exempt because you really don't have any other place to park. Um, what else? So some of the other <clears throat> exemptions that were adopted were if you're actively washing your vehicle, um, actively loading or unloading for up to 24 hours. Some of the other things we looked into, for example, were arterial streets. Now we know that they may not be specifically designated as no parking with signs, but we know, for example, Fox Hill Road, Woodland, Roads like that, there is no on-street parking, so those properties would be exempt, and so therefore they would be able to park on their lawn. Some other things would be uh, reasonable accommodation, mm -hmm. which would be approved by our zoning administrator, mm -hmm. um, th so things like that. And just to clarify a little bit of, even if there's parking on one side of your street on your block, you're still exempt, so it doesn't have to be that both sides you can't park on. You're allowed to park on your grass, or continue to park on your grass if there's no parking on one side or the other. But philosophically, we think driveways are a better option because of the compacting of the grass and all the things you've already said. Mm -hmm. um, and driveways are pretty costly. What is the city doing to help out people who would like to put in a driveway but can't really face all that cost on their own? That's a great question. So council approved a driveway grant <clears throat> to help those citizens who would be affected by the new ordinance that goes into effect July 1st. And so essentially people that don't currently have a driveway and would not comply with the new ordinance can apply for this new driveway grant. And we do have that application available online at hampton.gov slash no parking. So on that website has both the ordinance information and the driveway grant application. And um, I should have mentioned this new code goes into, or zoning ordinance, I'm sorry, goes into effect July 1. Mm -hmm. um, how big a problem do we think it is, Kim? How many people are currently, do you think, parking on their lawns? So we did a little bit of that work. So the inspectors kind of surveyed the city just so we could get an idea of how many people would be affected by this new ordinance. And I would say very roughly maybe 2,000 um, that we saw that were currently already now parking on their lawn that didn't have a driveway. That's a lot. We have a lot of older neighborhoods and, you know, they were built for a streetcar or they were built for one car households, you know, at the most. Mm -hmm. um, so, but many of them, I mean, they have on street parking. It just might mean you have to walk a little farther. Right. Um, what if, though, I'm disabled and I need that parking space right in front of my house? 
what can I do? So that would be something like a reasonable accommodation where you can come into our development services center and I will kind of evaluate those needs and, and we'll make an official determination that you're still allowed to park on your grass in order to Or public needs. works, if you call 311, public works can take a look at it and if you've got that medical certification, they can mark a spot for you on the street. On the street as so well. So there are if lots it, of that's... things we can do for, for people who might have those kind of special needs. As well, yep. Um, how much are, are the grants for a driveway? Like, I, I, mine is old. I have no idea, but I know that it's become very expensive, anything that has to do with building materials these days. So what we tried to do, we tried to estimate the cost of probably one of the cheapest kind of driveways you can put in, which would be a gravel ribbon driveway. The estimated cost for that was around $2,200. And so for the grant, if you are approved for the grant, you can get up to $2,250. So let's say your driveway costs 2000 then we, you would be reimbursed 2000 but up to $2,250. Um, if you choose to put in something more than that, so let's say you wanted to do a concrete driveway and you were approved for the grant and it was 5000 we would still only give you up to that $2,250 um, But it could offset. I mean, that's still like, you know, a half of the cost, which mm -hmm. would make it maybe affordable. Right. Now, let, what is a driveway? <laughs> Let's talk about what that definition is. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so it's an improved surface is kind of the technical term in our ordinance, and it includes things like gravel that are contained by a border. So it can be loose rock or and other compacted materials, as long as there's a border to kind of define that this is where we're parking. Um, and then, of course, it's things like concrete, asphalt, the kind of normal surfaces. And it also includes grass pavers, like those pavement systems, those por porous paving systems, um, as long as it's done per manufacturer specification. So you do need to kind of come in to our office, get a permit to install that sort of thing, and we will evaluate it and make sure it's installed properly so it can support a vehicle. So I did, I looked at those, they're really cool. It's like this steel grid mm -hmm. and it sticks up. So whatever is underneath it isn't getting compact, and it could be grass, it could be gravel, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, those do seem like a really good option. I don't know what they cost, but if you're environmentally conscious and can do that, it does seem like, you know, a really good thing. Mm -hmm. um, if someone has a gravel driveway that doesn't have a border, what, what does that mean? So that's a great question. <clears throat> One of the things that council wanted to allow was for those people who currently, before July 1st, have an existing gravel or loose material driveway, we are going to consider them legal nonconforming. And so essentially, we're not going to retroactively make you go back and put the border that we would now require if you're going to put in a new driveway. So we are going to allow existing driveways to remain as they are. Um, the only time we would require a new permit or that you would have to come into compliance with the new regulations is if you're going to expand the footprint or if, you're, if you remove it and put in a new driveway, you will not have to get a permit and it would have to comply with our new definition of improved surface. So putting in a driveway mm -hmm. requires a permit, even if I'm just dumping gravel out there. Yep, so new impervious surface um, does require a zoning permit and it's a pretty easy permit. It's only a $15 charge um, and we review those generally three or so days you know might take you know a response if you clarify what you're doing maybe a couple more days but very and is that something I can do online in the permit system yeah we have a new portal system I don't know if we want to talk too much about <laughs> that right now but yes there is a portal online if you go to our website so you can apply through that system that makes it a lot easier yeah. I think mm -hmm. yeah well what has been the reaction to um, to this new ordinance so I think we've had some mixed reviews. I know we've had a lot of um, information put out in different outlets such as news, social media, we've done door hangers and things like that. We've kind of, kind of had a, a mixed reaction. And I think that's normal for any new ordinance that this, you know, the city kind of approves. It just takes a little bit of getting used to and getting the education out there. And I think the biggest thing is for people to know why we're doing it and why it's important. and things like that. Uh, you know, I, I, that's what I saw. We obviously, we were putting on Facebook and next door, and a lot of people were very supportive. Neighborhoods, you know, people want pride in their neighborhood and pride in their own property. And you can have pride in your property, but if that people on the other side, it, it can hurt your value or it could just hurt your ability to sell. And it's just not pretty to look at, you know? It's just makes your life not quite as good in Hampton. And we have a great quality of life in Hampton. 
Um, other people, some of the reaction, and I think this was even people who weren't affected at all, but just have this sort of knee jerk, you can't tell me what to do on my own property. Um, we live in a city where we live close to each other. If you live out in the county, like I used to and, and when I was growing up, and you can't see your neighbor, that's one thing. <laughs> but when your neighbor, I mean, a lot of our lots are very close together, and what's happening over there does affect your life. Um, and just to recap, this is not out of the blue. We have um, implemented several different things over the past years to try to encourage that pride in your home, pride in your neighborhood. We limit how tall your grass can get. What is that limit? It's now eight inches. <laughs> <laughs> which, is, is, which is pretty darn tall. You know, if you're going away on vacation, even for